Hi guys, thank you so much for joining me. I know I said I was going to have a video up and I feel like I'm always making excuses, but I really did have good intentions of filming yesterday, Saturday and getting the video up for later Saturday morning, but then my mother needed some assistance with some things, so Jay and I went down there to do that. And then by the time I came back, it was like, pfft, you know, and I wasn't. So I thought about, oh, I feel regret for not doing that video. And, but then I thought about what I did instead was what I needed to do instead. And I had no regrets. So it's Sunday. If all goes well, you'll see this later today, Sunday afternoon. I'm going to talk about regrets a little bit, but more importantly, I'm going to talk about what have I learned in the last 50 years since my high school graduation. And yes, 50 years, I came across this photo and it was my high school picture. I know I've probably shared this in the past, but I'll superimpose it here. And then I found a picture of myself from a video that I did, I think, two weeks ago, and I did a side-by-side. -side. And I said, oh my gosh, where has the years gone? And that really got me thinking, got me thinking about my life, you know, where am I at in 2022? Where did I think I was going to be in 1972? And could 1972 really be 50 years ago? I was like, holy mackerel. So, anyways... That's what this video is going to be about. If you're interested, stay tuned. So, I've got some notes so that I don't forget the stuff I really wanted to talk about. But what have I learned and really how have I changed in these last 50 years? And I think the biggest thing for me was back in 1972, I never really even thought about getting old. I mean, did any of you back in when you were 18, 17, a young teenager, a young married woman, did you think of getting old? Did you, did you have those thoughts? But back in 1972, I was 18 years old. I was like, oh my gosh, full of life, full of excitement about what life was going to bring me. I was on the go. I was just absorbing it all because I think in 1972, I started to come into my own because previously I didn't have a great time at school and I was probably excited to be out of school. <laughs> so that's probably all of that. But I never planned on old age. I never planned on someday thinking about 2022 and being out of high school for 50 years. I never thought about you know, my family members leaving me through death and just separation of time and, you know, locations and stuff like that. I never thought about that. I think I kind of like was insulated and in thinking my life was just going to be the way it was. And that was it. You know, 1972, I mean, there were some things that really impacted me in 1972. I remember the the Olympics in Munich, Germany, and probably that stands out so much in my mind because I came from Germany. So I remember, you know, that the, those Olympics when the, uh, I think there was some Arab gunmen that had had stormed the, you know, the housing and they ended up murdering like 11 or so Israeli athletes and I I just remember with and hostage the whole th I just remember thinking oh my god how horrible how horrible that humanity can do such things and back then of course I was still really naive about the horrors of humanity and what people can do to each other but I remember thinking oh my gosh and then I don't know if it was about the same time or not but I also remember Watergate and I was like wow and of course now, perspective, perspective of a little history and all that, wiretap and to infiltrate the opposing parties, you know, planning sessions or whatever they did in Watergate, I thought was unbelievable. In retrospect, I see that this kind of stuff happens a lot in political circles. People, you know, the Democrats do it, the Republicans do it, the Independents do it, they all do it. 
in one way or another. They want to get the intel on the other party and all their plans and all that. But back then in 1972, I was horrified. I was horrified. And um, now I remember thinking when Nixon got impeached back then, yeah, you know, we don't need to have this type of leadership. And then, I, and then Gerald Ford pardoned him and I thought, holy mackerel. But anyways, I'm not going to go on a political thing. But I have learned over the time, while that so impacted me, that was actually pretty minor compared to some of the stuff that has happened since, I think. One of the biggest things, I remember this treaty, and I don't even know how many of you remember it. I'm looking to see what the exact words were. The Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty. This was a treaty that America and maybe even the NATO nations, I don't know, but I know America at least um, signed with Russia. And I remember thinking, oh, oh, we will never have a World War III. We signed a treaty. My kids will grow up. There won't be a World War III. There won't be a draft of, you know, this is just what I thought. We won't have a replay of Vietnam. We won't have this or that and a replay of World War II or World War I or anything dramatic. I thought we were done with that. And I just, when that treaty signed, I just felt so good as a mom, as a woman, thinking, yes, okay, this treaty was a big deal. 50 years later, and now I have those those fears are there all over again. Are we going to have a World War III? What's going to happen? How, how, how are, what's going to happen with my grandkids, etc.? So, you know, not much has changed like that. And I do remember something about the um, space shuttle program starting back in 72, which I thought was really cool. I was always watching the space shuttle program, and I remember JFK and, you know, all of the, you know, the plans and all that. So... I always thought that was really good. But most of the time back then, even though all these world stages, all these things were happening around me, I, I lived mostly day by day. And in most cases, paycheck by paycheck. I got married super young. I had children super young. And we never seemed to get beyond that paycheck to paycheck mode. There was always something that came up that we needed to put the money to. And most of the time, I was a stay-at-home mom. So one income having two kids made it really difficult. I, I often think, if I go back and think and go, wow, what if back then I had put away just a little bit of money, just a little bit of money, uh, 10 bucks a week, although 10 bucks in 72 was huge. But you know what I mean? A little bit of money uh, or a month. You know, how could that have impacted me today? And, you know, when I think about if I can go back into time, what would I really change out of everything that happened over the last 50 years? That's one of them. I think the major thing that if I could go back is knock on the door of my 1972 18-year-old self and say, hey, one day you are going to be in old age. You're going to be a mature senior. And you need to start thinking about planning for that because you can't depend on Social Security. You need to start thinking about saving and planning for that. And oh my gosh, had I done that, you know, had I, had I saved that, my, my life today might have been different. Now granted, I did get a divorce and from that time on, I did work full time and we're able to save and Jay and I are together and, you know, our kids are established and grown and grandchildren are young and all that. But what a difference it might have made had I done that back in the day, but I didn't. The other thing for sure that I would change, and I know I've talked about this before, as probably has everyone, is sunblock, right? I mean, back in the day, it was band de soleil, iodine, baking in the sun, slathering it on. Tans were gorgeous. If you were tanned, it was a sign of being beautiful. And um, I so wish that I could have somehow knocked sense into myself and, and said, Although the awareness was not there, you know, we didn't have this huge awareness back in 72 about the sun's damages like we do today. But if I could turn back the clock, I would turn back to using sunblock seriously every day, much, much earlier than I did. That would have made a huge difference on, on my skin and, you know, I'm having Mo surgery coming up. It's still not scheduled, by the way. I'm meeting with the plastic surgeon on Friday. So hopefully we'll get that done.
I just had my ear, ear surgery. I'm coming upon my two-week post-op appointment. Not that I want to digress, but, you know, I'm two weeks no driving, two weeks light duty, haven't been able to ride my bike, haven't tried. But there's certain things I'm not supposed to do, and I hate when I touch my ear and I can feel the stitches in there. It just grosses me out. Because what they did is they took the cartilage from underneath the front and they rebuilt the eardrum and patched up the eardrum because that all requires stitches. So that kind of grosses me out. So I don't want to digress. The sunblock alone and then regular skin checkups to me is, is huge. Th the thing that probably affected me the most as I was a young girl in preschool, not preschool, but pre-high school, junior high and stuff like that, was is it, I should have accepted and learned the fact that people who are mean or people who bully you do so because of their own insecurities because they they feel so horrible about themselves that they have to latch out you know, other people but back then i didn't realize that back then i thought oh my gosh i am ugly i am fat i do talk funny i'm this i'm that and and i internalized that i didn't realize that those people were really the ugly people and and they probably realized that and so they lashed out on other people. I wish there was a cure for bullying. I really do. I did a video on that. I'll try to link it if I can find it. But I do wish there was a cure for bullying because there's so much damage that is done and the kids at that age don't realize what they're doing and I think that has to start in the home. I think the parents have to be aware of the behavior of bullying and how that can impact other children and I think the parents have to take control. They have to own some control over that and maybe that would help a little bit. I don't know but then the school has a responsibility to recognize it and, and, and knock on the parents door and say here's what's happening with your child during the day he's doing this or she's doing that and are they bullies are they doing you know we need to and bring people together regroup and talk about it but parents sometimes get super defensive they're going ah not my little johnny not my little susie you know uh-uh and in real reality yes it can be little johnny and little susie but rather than letting those bullying words impact me i wish i could have just emotionally turned it right around in my mind at that point in time and realized they were the people that were hurting and they needed to lash out on to other people and I just happened to be you know in their way and and I happened to be strong enough to be able to take it or so I thought probably the other hardest thing is to clean the mirror you know the mirror in your mind because oftentimes the mirror in your mind is cloudy and distorted and sometimes the hardest thing for us is to see ourselves clearly and to put that in perspective so I'll get a compliment and I'm like I, I don't know what to take of it my husband said something to me last night he I mean I had no makeup on I was lying on the couch hadn't been feeling good and poor Jay's been taking care of me and nursing me and he came up to me and he just like came up really close I thought he was gonna kiss me and he was like looking at me and I'm like going oh my gosh he's probably looking at me going what did I marry she has no makeup on, she's lying there. And instead, he smiled. He goes, you are really beautiful. Out of the blue. And I was dumbfounded. No makeup, no eye makeup, just lying there. My hair was grubby. And he goes, you are really beautiful. And I looked at him and I said, really? And he said, yeah. And then he kissed me. And... He sees me in a completely different way than I see me. I realize that. So I realize a lot of times my mirror, my internal mirror is cloudy. I know that now and I know I have to work on getting that clearer every time I look and, and try to be objective. But it, it's nice to hear the, those words, especially from Jay, who he's not, I mean, he brings me flowers, you know, um, but he's not a super mushy person. He's more of a guy's guy. You want to go golf and want to go bike and want to do this and that type of thing. So, um, yeah, you know, clean the mirror because you are really better than what you think you are. You look better than what you think you look like. You are a better person than you think you are. So clean that mirror in your mind. I, I wish I had learned early on to speak up more for myself. Being a middle child, I was always 
the peacekeeper. I was always the peacekeeper, being that middle child. I always tried to make things better for my brother, my sister. And I also grew up with a mother. I love her dearly, but my mother has no filter. I've said this before. I, if I want an honest opinion on how my hair looks or this or that, I'll go to my mother because she's going to tell me the way it is. No filter. doesn't worry about hurting my feelings whatsoever. And that can be good and that can be bad, right? Because growing up, being a middle child, a peacekeeper, and also having a parent that had no filter made me think twice, three times before I opened my mouth to say something. It didn't make me, um, it didn't make me lack confidence. It just made me want to not be hurtful to other people. It made me realize over the course of time, especially, and today I think of it often because there are times when I'm dealing with my mom or I'm dealing with other family members that I want to say something. And then it, it just makes me realize that sometimes words unspoken are more powerful. So some words are not meant to say out loud because if you say them out loud, you can't pull them back. And that pain is there and resonates. So I mentioned earlier that I found my old high school picture from 1972. And I've looked at this picture before and I've looked at other pictures before. But one of the things that I always crack up at is how horribly hooded my eyes were. Now back in 1972 or even 68, you know, 70, when I was in high school, eye makeup, Twiggy with the exaggerated eyelashes, white eyeshadow. That was like all the rage. So I would put on the eyeshadow, you could never see it because it would be buried up underneath my hoods. So I always hated my eyes because I never had those pretty, you know, doe type eyes that people could get mesmerized in. I thought my eyes were pretty ugly actually. But one of the huge benefits of being where I am today or getting older is that over the course of time, I did learn how to apply makeup better. I did learn how to apply eyeshadow better, although I'm not perfect, but I'm better than I was a year ago. I'm better than I was two years ago, and I'm certainly better than I was in 1972. I could make my eyes look halfway decent. And over the course of time of using Retin-A and a few other products, the Olay, and all of that. I think my eyes, my hoods have lifted. Of course, they could also be sunken in due to old age, you know, but I think my hoods have lifted somewhat and my eyelashes are way better due to my eyelash serum. I use Blink Eyelash Serum and I, it works for me and and uh, I love having a little bit of eyelashes. Out my hoods have improved, my skin has improved, and that brings me to one of the factors that I know people ask, I get this in the comment all, all the time, is it too late? You know what, it is never, ever too late. It really is never, ever too late, at least as long as you are breathing. If you're no longer breathing, then then yeah. But um, it's never too late to, to start skin care, to start taking care of yourself. Yes, you might have to put up with the damage you did all those years, but you can minimize that to a certain degree. Makeup, skin care, wearing sunblock, all of that. It's never too late to start anything like that. So it's not too late for Retin-A. It's not too late for skincare. It's not too late for anything. And it certainly isn't too late to work on your attitude and work on trying to see yourself in reality, basically. But working on your attitude, it, telling people, my husband, you were really beautiful, out of the blue. And I know he was being silly, but still, how impactful those words were. I love you. How impactful those words were for me. And it came out of the blue. It wasn't anything that I thought he was going to say when he came up to me. So people need to hear those words. And you can be the giver of praise. You can be the giver of encouragement and making other people feel good by extending that part of you to be positive, to give that positive reinforcement, to say to people, gosh, I love you or I love this about you, or I, you know, you've been such an awesome friend. You're not, not being afraid to say those words. It's never, ever too late. And people, and I'm a classic example. I think yesterday I needed to hear those words from my husband. People need to hear those words. So I know I'm not going to have another 50 years. I'm not going to look back, you know, 50 years from now and, and talk about what 2020, was like 
I can't even imagine what is, the world is going to be like in 50 years. I, I can't. But I hope that whatever time I have left, that I live up to my beliefs of leaving that positive impression, to uh, giving that positive reinforcement to other people and sharing my thoughts and feelings all positive and remembering negativity negativity should never be allowed to overtake you so always always brush off that mirror in your mind and um, just stay positive and say the words the good words everyone needs a good word so I know this video was probably not exactly what you expected <laughs> I don't have any new products I do have some wigs but I have not um, I've not reviewed them. Um, so yeah, you know, just another little bit of this, a little bit of that. And this is the comparison. I'm going to close with this comparison so you can see me now, what you see, and back then. And just thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please make sure you thumbs up the video. Leave me a comment below. I would truly appreciate it. And I love you all.